have this for our judges who couldn't be here today. But at this time, I want to hand it over to you, team. And we are very excited for our last top five team presentation. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Madeleine. So good. Hello, everyone. So we are about to start our presentation. Um, please, can we, can we begin? Yes, you're welcome to begin anytime. Okay. Welcome to Team Dajon Maps Initiative. Our cultural sector is a very important sector, taking 54% of the populace agriculture in Ghana. Even at that, there's still food insecurity, hunger, and poverty. As such, the government spends a lot in importation of fertilizer to improve the agricultural sector, with 200 million being spent in 2020. The northern region of Ghana is very affected by this because they spend a lot, they do a lot of agriculture in this part of the country. As such, we ask ourselves, what can we do? Since there's also high open defecation in these areas. And then the fertilizers that are imported are mostly in organic fertilizer, which has high cost, limited availability, the negative effects on the environment. And the open defecation that means 70% of the populace of the northern part experience causes sanitation issues and health problems on the citizens. After conducting our research, we discovered that a staggering 80% of individuals in the north of Ghana engage in open defecation. This equates to approximately 1.7 million people, according to UNICEF. As a result, an enormous amount of waste is produced on a daily basis, presenting a significant challenge of sewage management. As a forward-thinking team, Najoban began to ponder the possibility of transforming this waste into a sustainable economic fertilizer. We dubbed this innovative product Pelfer 635. By doing so, we could not only address the issue of open defecation, but also create a valuable resource that could benefit the local economy. So with that, we created that is the water-free closet, which estimated that one person produces approximately one to eight grams of feces daily, which accumulates to approximately 46.72 kilograms annually. So there you see our projected conceptual image of the water free closet and a pictorial demonstration of how it works. Then we also realized that 10, 20, 20 cubic of meters could actually produce, that is three to 10 kilogram of fertilizer. Sorry. So in order to fully comprehend the importance of converting waste into fertilizer, it is critical to consider the alternatives associated with the farmers. These alternatives include inorganic and organic fertilizers. However, inorganic fertilizers are not produced in our region, so must be transported from the Europe, from Europe. So as a result of this, there has been a growing interest in the use of organic fertilizers. This is where there must, this is where there's an increase in supply as Ghana's demand for fertilizer is expected to rise by 3.5% each year until 2026. Thank you very much. To begin with our competitor analysis, 5% of, uh, of the fertilizer supply in Ghana is mainly organic fertilizer, while the 95% is by the inorganic fertilizer. The major players with the inorganic fertilizer are Yara, Glowfet, Omnifet, who have blending plants here that process the fertilizer. The, the major player with the organic fertilizer is Accra Compost Recycling Plants, popularly known as Accra. Please move to the next slide. So I'll quickly walk you through our business model. First of all, to begin with, our key partners are the organic are the farmers who will be supplying our eco-friendly organic fertilizer to 
then also our suppliers who are very instrumental in providing us with the equipment we require in completing our production process. Also with the distributors who will help us sell our products to the end users, as well as the regulatory bodies we are going to deal with. Um, the Ghana Standard Authority, the Ghana Standard Authority, the Environmental Protection Agency, as well as the local authorities will be using. And as we are planning on going increasing, we will also have to deal with the soil association for uh, with the certification. Also, with our value proposition, we are we offer to we are offering a solution that converts human waste into safe nutrients and an affordable, eco-friendly organic fertilizer that will help boost agricultural productivity. Our key resources here we will employ are the raw materials, which are the human fuses, the plant and equipment, as well as the employees. And our key performance indicators will be from our sales revenue, making also taking a great share, taking a great traction you know, with a market share, our production efficiency, and also customers being satisfied. With. Also, with our customer relationships, we build up on personal relationships and our virtual support system. And our customer segments are mainly farmers, home gardeners, as well as our distributors who will help us in selling a product to their customers. Our channels will be through direct sales, plus our distributors again, as well as attending, taking advantage of the trade fairs and trade conferences to sell our product. And our revenue stream will be directly from our direct sales and our distributors who will be our wholesalers. So our go-to-market strategy we, is segmented into three. The first one is our, our finished product, that's the eco-friendly fertilizer, going through to the um, stores, whether e-commerce or physical store, for the farmers and home gardeners to procure it from there, or going through the, distribu going through the distributors who will now sell it to their customers, as well as employ, taking advantage of the um, trade conferences and trade shows. Yes. So with our production process, we will so with our production process, so our production process involves four phases. Phase one has to do with we mixing the Okay, so phase, phase one has to do with collection of the organic material, and then phase two has to do with, with decomposing the organic material. Then, of course, after the organic material is decomposed, we then remove it from the toilet and dry it out again in the sun, just to ensure that it is dried out. Now, after the product is eventually packed, it will be sold at 50 Ghana cities for the 50 kilograms, which is a powder fertilizer. In this project, we require an amount of $4,800 to start with on a pilot basis. This money will be broken as follows. We will need 15,600 Ghana cities for raw materials, 4,800 Ghana cities for labor, and then we need to buy our equipment and then to register that here with the research general department with an amount of 18,120 Ghana cities. With 4,000 Ghana cities being used in transportation, we need 9,000 Ghana cities in general and administrative expenses, whereas our packaging will require 4,800 Ghana cities. With the first panel, we expect that in the first year, we will make profit at a rate of 5%, but in subsequent years, our profit margin will be at 23%. So we maintain on this small scale. But on the pilot basis, which on the scale up basis, the profit will go up significantly. Okay, so with our SWOT analysis, first to begin with our strength, we, uh, we are producing an environmental friendly product. Our product is eco-friendly. Also, the product is a quality organic product product as well as our excellent customer service. With the weakness um, that something will be set as along the way has to do first of all with the potential stigmatization that will be meted out to um, those who collect the raw materials as well as the inadequate infrastructure and equipment for the uh, collection of our raw materials as well as um, lack of, uh, let me say, insufficient funding with our weakness. Our opportunities has to do with increasing the opportunities we are seeing in this industry is the increased global demand for organic products 
as well as we contributing towards achieving the SDGs. And our partnership and collaboration with local communities, NGOs, and government agencies can help increase the awareness and the adoption of our eco-friendly fertilizer. The trends that um, we are faced with has to do with the contract disbelief limitation, as well as the lack of appropriate regulation and policies on the use of fecal fertilizer in this side of our world. With our projects, we believe that we are going to benefit um, sustainable development goals with number one, with the no poverty, because as we, with the locality, that we plan to set up our equipment. We are going to offer jobs, great jobs for them. And then also with zero hunger being number two, we are trying to ensure that with fertilizer, we want to um, enhance the sustainability of the agricultural sector in Ghana. And also with goal three, good health and well-being. The issues with open defecations, we are going to ensure that those are lessened. And also with goal six, clean water. With open defecation, there's been issues of clean water. And also we are going to ensure that our systems are going to be done in a responsible consumption production method. All right, so you can see that's team that your map. So with our, our observation and research, we found out that when um, based on the introduction of our product, will help a lot in improving and boosting agricultural productivity mainly in our research focused area. And once it's successful, which we know it will be successful, we can now spread it across all over Ghana and take it to the West African sub-region as well as all, all over Africa. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Team that woman. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. One second. Oh, there we are. Thank you, thank you, team Theofer. I think I, I lost you at the last couple of seconds, but thank you, thank you so much. Um, at this time, if you want to close your presentation, we'll begin the Q&A. I see Nereti already has her hand raised, so I'm gonna pass it over to her. Nereti, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, team fellow friends. That was really good. I'm very thoughtful. Um, just one question. So while you're drying the, the waste, how do you deal with the liquid that comes out of the waste so it doesn't cause another pollution? I didn't hear that from your, um, from your presentation. How do you deal with the liquid that comes out from, from the waste? How do you dispense it? without it causing any pollution. Okay. Okay, so um, what, what we do is that when you look at our prototype carefully, you realize that we have what we call the leachate discharge. And then that is where the excess liquid is being taken out from. With that, we don't throw out that particular liquid, which um, contains, which is um, urine. We don't throw it out because we believe that it contains nitrogen, it contains ammonia, it also contains some of the micronutrients. So with that, we use that as a form of fetishize um, to the um, farmers. Thank you. Thank you. And how do you hope to deal with the stigma um, regarding all the stuff that you'll be using to collect the waste? Okay, so what we'll do is um, we are going to organize that is what we call community sensitization, just to speak to that is the indigenous at that particular place that we want to have um, the fertilizer being produced. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nereti. Uh, Diane? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, interesting concept, definitely. Uh, two questions for you. Where do you plan on doing this in Ghana, are you going to start in Accra? Are you going to start in Kumasi, Takaradi? Where exactly are you going to start? Yes, yeah, so um, we are going to start in the northern region of Ghana. And okay. there is a town, a town called, a village actually, called Chakali. The Chakali, okay. yes. So that is where we are going to start our whole production. Okay, great. Um, so the second question then is, um, when I, I, 
I might have missed it in the finance slide because it went kind of quick, but um, have you factored in uh, the whole cost of logistics? Have Because it seemed like the amount that you factored in for equipment was quite low because you would need trucks, you'd need a facility, you would need the actual equipment to do some processing. Um, you need to be able to distribute it, pick up the feces and then distribute it back. You need a large piece of land to be able to dry it. So it just seemed like there was part, I didn't see those numbers reflected in your budget, but I might've missed it. So feel free to correct me. Yeah, so um, like we said earlier, out of the $4,800 that is required, we will we spend 15,600 Ghana cities in procuring the, the, the machinery mm -hmm. that we need for the production. No, we, need, we spend 15,600 cities on raw materials, actually, on raw material. Mm -hmm. It's a gathering of the waste. Yeah. Then we spend 4,800 Ghana cities on labor. That is the people that will gather the waste for us. Then we will buy the equipment that is needed. We will buy the equipment that is needed in the production at mm -hmm. the rate of 16,320 cities, And then we we'll register that year with an amount of 1,800. That will give us 18,120 cities. We will spend 4,000 cities on transportation. And then we need, we need 9,000 cities on the other cost, which is the administrative and general expenses. Our packaging will cost us six Ghana cities per sack. And for the first consignment, we hope to produce 800 bags. So when you multiply the 800 bags by the six Ghana cities, it will give you 4,800 Ghana cities. So all in all, the first set of production to be complete, we need $4,800. We can ship the 6,000 Ghana cities. For the sustenance on the That is for the pilot and babies. But as we move on to scale up, we need an amount of 500000 on the $500,000 for the scale up babies. And that is when the pilot has grown. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I would just check into that because it seems extremely low, and I've built factories in Ghana. So, um, and the other thing, just some of the practical aspects is that when you hire employees, you also have a lot of administrative costs, legal costs, taxes you need to pay to the government, your insurance and that kind of idea. So, um, but anyways, great idea, great start. So kudos to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Dan. Hey, son. Yeah, so thank you so much and a good job. And uh, just to have a question on the, you mentioned it in the SWOT analysis on the uh, regulatory, uh, or legal barriers uh, for this. How do you how do you plan to navigate it? How are you going to plan to work around it? And what is it? Do you know uh, which framework you'll be working on legally? Can you please repeat the question? In your SWOT analysis, you mentioned there is the legal barrier. There are some regulations in the country in Ghana regarding doing that, to, to executing this project. What is it? What is this? What are these barriers? How do you plan to navigate if it exists? Okay, thank you so much. Um, first, because we need a permit from first of all to begin in the committee, we need a permit from the local or municipal authority. We need a permit from them to be able to carry out the project we want to carry out there, as well as we also need a permit from the Environmental Protection Agency. And when the product is produced in Ghana, there's a standard authority that sets that set price, whatever product you produce, that is it's actually safe for the people of Ghana to use. So these are the um, regulatory authorities we will deal with that locally. But if you want to go internationally for our product to receive international certification, um, that's when we'll have to deal with it. So association. Thank you, sir. The government also makes it free. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Joanne. Thank you very much and congratulations. I find it very, very interesting. And I like the question that Nireti asked in regards to dealing with stigma. I don't know whether you have a specific uh, strategy. I would really love to hear that. Uh, the second thing is, is this idea replicated from anywhere else? Is there somebody anywhere in the world 
who's doing this or who has done this that you're partnering with or who you're benchmarking against. Just that. Thank you very much and congratulations. With um, the first question, so with the stigmatization, we plan to desensitization, and then we plan to do this by first of all contacting the heads of the locality. So if it's um, if you have to go contact the chief and even the um, legal authorities concerning that body to ensure that they know the people, to ensure that we can communicate with the people in a way that they best understand what we are coming to do so that they don't stigmatize our employees and they welcome them because they can see the benefits of what our product is bringing to their community as well. Okay, with the second question, like I, I said, with the, inorgan with the organic fertilizer, it's the supply contributes 5% and there are some players already in the industry who also some use of use waste, like the major player there is the Accra Compost Recycling Plant, popularly known as Accra, as well as um, Jakura Ventures, Jakura Ventures. So these are um, public private institutions that are somewhat trying to also um, penetrate the market. But like I said, that it only contributes 5% of the whole um, organic fertilizer in Ghana. Sorry, I'm not very clear. You're saying that those companies are already using human biological waste? With the human feces and what, uh, no, with the human feces here, they, they don't use human feces before. What some use are on animal droppings and other things. So with okay. the human, it's something we, are, we, are come, we have come up with innovating to also transform into fertilizer. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, Darius, I have your hand up. Hi, uh, thanks team, Dodger Map. That was a really cool presentation. Um, you didn't say as much today, but in your, in your materials that you submitted, you talk about providing some farmer support services for weeks, you said even months if necessary, to help them understand how to apply this fertilizer. Also, you mentioned testing their soil. I, I'm just curious how serious you are about that piece because that could be more, much more expensive than the whole product itself. It's very capital, human capital intensive. It requires expertise. And you know, rural ag extension related fertilizer use is sort of, a, it's a challenge that hasn't really been cracked in a lot of places. So I'm just curious, like, is that really, is that priced into your model, this agricultural? extension services so it's it's simple because um, for instance here in ghana uh, the, the, the ministry of agri has already agri extension offices and as well as also pms so uh, people who work on the soil in the various districts and like we said we are going to collaborate with them because at this stage we want to cut down on because we'll collaborate with them to help us um, through the farmers, because it's something the government does to also help boost agricultural productivity here. Because those who are into farming mostly are uh, currently in Ghana are not too educated. So we will, the, we will work with such people to help us carry out that pro uh, project. That's what we spoke about uh, in our business model about customer relationship, where we set our personal relationship. And that's where it actually covers, where we'll be able to know the right um, quantity, the right um, uh, material. Right. So these extend sorry, so these extension officers are actually a key client for you because they need to believe in what you're doing. The soil yeah. testing offices. Yes. The soil testing offices. So, like I said, the Ministry of Agri already has it. And it's something it, it also fits in line with one the vision of the current government that was to drive agriculture um and production and productivity in Ghana. So it's something that once they are willing to partner with us to get it done. Thank you. And I apologize. I have to go to my next meeting. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Thank you Darius. All right. Uh, Peter, do you, did you have a question or a Neil or Roberta? Uh, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. You're good. And Neil? I'm good. All good. Sorry, it was Thank a you. very good presentation. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Roberta? All good, thank you. Roberta, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
That's awesome. Oh my gosh, we only ended up with one minute over time. So that is amazing, very impressive. Thank you, thank you to all of our judges here who are left. Uh, I'm working on sending you an email with the recordings. I know it's a very quick turnaround time because our awards um, recognition is tomorrow. Um, so if you could send me those rubrics over or complete them via Google. Uh, oh, I have Roberta here. Or um, complete them via Google Documents. That would be a huge, huge help. Um, I know that we are over time and, and really quickly, before we go, Roberta, I just want to make sure you didn't have any more questions or comments. No, I don't have any questions at this time. Okay, amazing. All right, well, with that, I just want to say thank you, team. I want to say thank you to the judges. We'll be in touch. And as always, uh, we're very, very impressed with you and all of the work you've put in. And thank you for your patience with me and Peaks and all of this, uh, this program entirely. So thank you, everybody. And I look forward to seeing and talking to you soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye